Thank you for joining me here on my last segment of today's show. Not too much to do with the production on the field, but what happens off of the field, right? We had to talk about this ongoing thing between Cam Taylor Britt, the defensive back for the Bengals, and the, the teams he plays, the opponents he plays, because it's two weeks now in a row that Cam Taylor Britt has talked trash about his opponents, and both times they've lost, evidently, them being still 0-3. If you remember the first one, um, his first comments on Xavier Worthy when they faced the Kansas City Chiefs, and how uh, like Xavier Worthy could only run straight, um, and how he wasn't really that fast unless you got his hand you got your hands on him and to his credit you know it worked out better for him in that game because he had a very impressive interception but they still lost at the end of the day so now this week going into Monday's game against the commanders um going to face a young rookie quarterback right the Bengals were obviously favored in this game and I'm sure within the locker room I'm sure Cam Taylor Britt was feeling it like they should handle the commanders pretty pretty easily with the comments that he made on um with the comments he made on their their offense as a whole Cliff Kingsbury the offensive coordinator and the offense that they ran around Jaden Daniels because he said that they don't make him do a lot Jaden Daniels that is uh they keep it really simple for him nice college offense Kingsbury the offensive coordinator so they love to move guys around here and there but just keep it real simple for him which I, I, I will get into more as to what I feel about it, but you could have just left it at they run a nice, simple offense for him. They make him not do a lot. They keep it real simple for him. That's all That's all Taylor, Cam Taylor Britt had to say. He could have ended it right there. But to go further and say it's a nice college offense that uh, they like to move guys around here and there, but just keep it real simple for him, it, it's like you know one of those backhanded compliments um, unnecessary most of the times in many instances, and it was unnecessary to say here, and even though you felt like the, the favorites, which some people might, you know, hit back at because they haven't won a game yet, um, it, it's just gets to a point where you just don't need to say it, um, to me in that instance, when I saw it right away, I'm thinking, like, man, like, they better win this game, um, or else, like, what does that say about your defense, right, that, you think this is a nice, simple college offense, but you still lose. Um, that was my mindset right away. And, you know, obviously, Jaden Daniels goes on to have his breakthrough game. Obviously, right, that was supposed to happen. Uh, he went 21 of 23, 254 yards, and accounted for three touchdowns against this defense. That same college-level offense, the college-level offense run by this rookie quarterback, scored three touchdowns on you and put up nearly 40 points on your defense and that's where I think when you kind of get shown up like this um it was brought up to Zach Taylor's attention and you know he didn't really feel great about Cam Taylor Britt's comments um he addressed it pretty directly he said that's not what we do we praise our team praise the other team uh, we don't need to take shots like that. That team hasn't punted in two weeks. They've scored on every single possession the last two weeks. And Cam Taylor Britt also was asked about it after the game. And he said he didn't regret his comments. He said also that he didn't mean it to be in a malicious way. Um, he also felt that it was a made bigger than what he thought it was going to be. You know, he didn't think it was going to take uh the way that it did he didn't think it would catch the the momentum that it evidently did but obviously that was the opposite of what happened and he admitted that he he's just gonna eat his words after taking another loss but also he still was pretty uh adamant about that it was still resembled a college level offense which was pretty funny but to me now now that i can get my thoughts on it now that I've brought out all the the facts about the situation um I have no problem with the confidence or the attitude or setting a tone going into the game especially against the Chiefs right the mini rivalry that they've had with the Bengals um over the years in the playoff games Joe Burrow uh Burrowhead the the comments by Jamar Chase on Patrick Patrick answering back on social media that's all fine um but 
it, it's it's different when you add this context in about the the Bengals defense, right? Especially on defense, I'll say this one more thing. On defense, when you're talking about defensive backs, anybody on that side of the ball, it, they have to have a short memory, right? That's always something you hear about defensive backs, um, anybody on the defensive side of the ball. You just have to go out there and think next play, next play, next play. Um, because it's hard in the NFL, obviously, to win every single rep against these talented wide receivers. So I understand all of that. But when you bring in the context specifically around the Cincinnati Bengals, that's where I really don't like seeing guys have this arrogance or this ignorance about them. Because I just don't think it makes them look any better um, as they might think they look, um, I guess you could say. Because you know you lost the, the first time you did this, right? So doing it again brings an unnecessary amount of attention to you and a defense that against the pass, the passing game in the first two weeks and just overall has been one of the worst I think we've seen in the NFL. So the run defense obviously isn't anything great either. You don't want to absolve them, but this passing defense, you know, your offense put up 33 points in this game and you still lost to a rookie quarterback who you only managed to force into two incompletions, again, to a rookie quarterback who up until this point hasn't thrown a touchdown at all. You know, they kicked seven field goals against the Giants, and in week one, they uh, they got beat pretty handedly by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, you let him walk into your stadium, you make these comments, you know, thinking that you're going to probably walk all over them, and their offense just doesn't miss a beat. Like Zach Taylor says, they haven't punted in uh, in the last two weeks, and they've scored in every possession the last two weeks as well. So, um, it, it says a lot when you... Again, the confidence to say it again, you don't want to kind of lay down any other team. I understand that, obviously. But when you're, especially when your side of the ball is the big reason why you haven't really won these games, um, when you're putting up 30 plus points, more often than not, you expect to win these games, especially against a commander's team that is just trying now to get started up again with a new coach, new everything, basically. And, uh, when the defense is the one talking, when the defense is trying to cash, is trying to get these checks that they evidently can't cash at the end of the day, uh, writing these checks that the entire defense can't cash, it's uh, it's not a good look, and it just adds more attention. It brings more eyeballs really to this defense, where I don't think they need any more attention on them. Because if you just watch the game and Cam Taylor Britt doesn't say anything, you look at how it becomes pretty evident how this defense is not the strong point of this team, right? It's not what um, is a reliable part of this team. So when they still go out there and Cam Taylor Britt really is the only one on that defense talking this talk like they've been dominating teams so far, like they haven't won a game. Um, Losing, like Michael Parsons said, I think in an interview recently, it's very humbling. So to not take that approach... um, I don't really understand it. Not even like they've been... It's not like they've even been all right on the defensive side of the ball. They've not been good at all. And you're still making these statements like you um, like you need to instigate your opponent or anything like that. Um, it really felt unnecessary to me. I thought it was pretty foolish to see it out of Cam Taylor Bray. It looks arrogant for a team that hasn't won a game and still thinks these other teams uh, run simple offenses, right? To say that this college-level offense is, um, in a way, maybe not something you're really fearing or something that you're not really worried about. Um, Afterwards, like I said, if you don't win these games by some way or another, if you talk the talk and then don't walk the walk, how does it make your defense look that this college-level offense that you're not worried about goes into your home field and beats you and puts up nearly 40 points on you? It makes you look a lot worse, obviously, now. Um, that you have to backtrack on your statement made at the beginning of the game. Zach Taylor's obviously not a fan of it. And worse, the the worst thing about this could be that people begin associating this arrogance and ignorance to the entire team, right? People start saying that uh, this defense is um, is overhyping themselves up, or they're or the defense is talking too much, or they're um, talking way too much for a team that hasn't won anything. When really it's just one guy that is writing these checks that the defense can't cash. And 
once that becomes something that you associate to the entire team, the entire defense, it, it makes it a lot worse, right? I think coming just from one individual to, to say these things and to say back-to-back -back weeks and not have it pan out, um, it'll be interesting to see if, they, if he says anything again because he'd have an opportunity to going up against the Panthers, right? That would be an ideal situation to be like, like we're 0-3, but we're going to win next game, right? Or something like that, right, for Cam Taylor Britt to say because the Panthers haven't been great, but they just won their first game. So I don't think he'll say anything. Um, hopefully he's learned his lesson. But, um, again, these situations I just had to bring up because now Zach Taylor's talking about it. Um, it it's not looking good. It's unnecessary attention for a team that needs to worry about anything other than just winning, right? They don't need to worry about anything other than just winning. So these things, these extra distractions and, and things like that, not football related, is the last thing this team needs. And um, it's not helping out with what Cam Taylor Britt is saying. So hopefully he's learned his lesson. Hopefully they could just focus in on improving their side of the ball of all of all sides. So that'll be the last thing I bring up on this show. I had to bring it up because of how it all turned out over the last two weeks, but that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, as well as following the network on all forms of social media, where you could also find more content around the NFL on both of the network's YouTube channels, the GSMC Podcast Network channel, and the GSMC Sports Network channel to find more content around this show and around the NFL. Tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more of these live shows covering everything that there is to cover around the NFL with me, Manny Maradiegui, as your host. Thanking you guys again for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go. To